What should SLPs know about oxygen therapies and dysphagia? Oxygen therapies for dysphagia patients. If you're an SLP who works with patients using supplemental oxygen, whether that's nasal cannula, high flow oxygen, or oxygen masks, do you ever wonder how this extra force of oxygen streaming down their throat could impact swallowing and airway protection during meals? Basically, do you worry they're more likely to aspirate if they're relying on oxygen therapy? This is an excellent and super popular question. It's also a very valid question. That's why I wanna spend some time during today's episode to tap into respiratory function and supplemental oxygen as it relates to swallowing. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Why should SLPs know about a patient's respiratory status? The respiratory status of a patient can often tell us how sick a patient truly is. A nasal cannula offers the lowest amount of oxygen delivery and often indicates the least amount of medical compromise. Patients in moderate respiratory distress can have difficulty coordinating breathing and respiration during the swallow. Patients with high flow oxygen tubing or a mask often require the most amount of oxygen support. We will not go into each type of mask or the different types of levels and supports in this video. However, it's important to understand how swallowing functioning can be negatively impacted by impaired respiratory conditions in the following ways. Gross et al. in 2003 stated that when swallowing occurs at the end of respiration, patients can have a shorter length of swallow and an increase in penetration and aspiration. Bowden et al. in 2009 determined that altered respirations caused shortened apnea during the swallow and decreased airway closure time which can increase risk of penetration and aspiration. Hypercapnia, which is retention of carbon dioxide, can lead to swallowing during the inhalation phase and also impact clinical signs of aspiration. This is Nishino et al. in 1998. If you're looking for more information, please check out episode 153 of the Swallow Your Pride podcast where I interviewed Rory O'Brien and Candace Devlin on this topic. I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't wanna miss. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. Also, do you have any specific questions about what SLPs should know about oxygen therapies and dysphagia? Leave a comment below and tell me about it. We'll be sure to get your questions answered as soon as possible. So, can I just move the mask for a swallowing evaluation? Short answer is, it depends. If the patient is requiring increased oxygen via a mask in the context of deteriorating respiratory status or having just been extubated, then the answer is no. They require a non-rebreather mask needing up to 15 liters per minute? That's a no. That can often be a precursor to being intubated. We may need to defer the assessment once their respiratory status has improved. But if they are stable and say they require an open oxygen mask because they are a mouth breather requiring something like 6 to 10 liters per minute of flow, then it's reasonable to take it off for each bite, replacing it as the patient swallows. It's important to watch closely for activity tolerance watching respiratory rate, and SpO2. There is no one answer. It is super patient dependent. As you know how important oxygen delivery is for impaired respiratory function, we don't just want to remove that oxygen, as that oxygen is needed to adequately ventilate and swallow. Collaborate with a respiratory therapist to see if the patient can be transitioned to a different device that would help with the oxygen delivery while being able to access their mouth for the evaluation. Many patients are on open oxygen masks because they are mouth breathers, especially when they sleep. These are the patients who can usually easily transition to a nasal cannula for PO intake. Of course, all of this information is super patient specific and we just don't have a solid guidebook as to how to treat each and every case. A colleague shared a story with me during COVID when they weren't able to use fees. She said they had to rely on using many other clinical indicators such as respiratory rate, mental status, flow rate, neurostatus, etc. My colleagues said they would have a lot of COVID patients just slide the nose piece onto the bridge of their nose for the swallow, then replace it immediately after, taking a few breaths before taking their next bite. These were dire situations of patients who refused feeding tubes and just needed to eat. Some were on high flow and did just fine with it. All of this to say, please continue doing your instrumentals and fees exams on these patients. But learning all of these other factors can help you contribute an educated hypothesis to the medical team. SwallowStudy.com has a fabulous blog on this topic that we'll link in the description below. Can I do an evaluation if they are on high flow? Yes. 
There is emerging though varying research on the impact high flow oxygen delivery may have on adult oropharyngeal swallowing functioning. Of the studies evaluating patients requiring high flow nasal cannula, nearly all included subjects that were able to initiate oral diets. However, a high percentage required dysphagia diets and or liquid modifications based on results of the instrumental swallow studies. Further research is needed, but preliminary studies indicate that high flow nasal cannula alone should not prohibit SLP evaluations and oral diets. One thing that can create a barrier when it comes to evaluating the swallow of someone who relies on high flow oxygen is accessing an instrumental swallow study. Many facilities may not be able to support high flow oxygen needs in the fluoroscopy suite, thus making it impossible to do a video fluoroscopy. This is a good case for fees, so you can come into the patient's room and assess their swallow right there without interrupting their high flow oxygen. A friend of mine shared a story where she had a patient with high flow oxygen and was at a facility that could actually support the high flow oxygen in the fluoroscopy suite. So she was able to see his swallow with the supplemental oxygen under imaging. This was the first time she would ever do this, so she wasn't quite sure what to expect. The nurse had to attend and bring the oxygen monitor down so his O2 stats could be continuously monitored during the study. The first swallow of thin liquid was a bit disorganized and resulted in silent aspiration of a small amount. My friend is MBS IMP certified and doesn't score the very first swallow per the protocol. She provided a second teaspoon trial of thin liquid barium and noticed a much more organized swallow pattern. As she continued with trials, she could see the patient had low endurance and was beginning to show signs of fatigue. So she had him wait a little longer in between trials and assess strategies like bolus hold and smaller portions, which resulted in greater airway protection. All of this led to a recommendation of pureed food and thin liquids while implementing these strategies and slowly weaning off of tube feedings. Paired with strict oral care, the patient did beautifully. They were able to remove the feeding tube within a week and he slowly moved away from high flow oxygen. My friend told me she was initially surprised to see how well he did during the video fluoroscopy because she used to think that any patient on high flow oxygen automatically meant NPO. This plus the research articles I described earlier changed her practice for good. If you're interested in learning more about this topic, check out the free resource we have from the MedSLP Collective by Rory O'Brien and Candace Devlin. They did an amazing job putting together all of the different types of oxygen devices, delivery settings, and the nature of each use. Find the link in the description below.